the first fella said to the second fella, well, you've been to a party or something, your eyes is all bloodshot. You got little red veins in them. So the second fella said, I'm glad you told me. I thought I was looking at a road map all day. <laughs> Hazel, would you mind bringing in my coffee? Don't you get it, Mr. B? Yes, Hazel, I get it, but would you mind? Well, I got another one. These two men are talking about the minister, you see. And one man says, boy, he sure has aged. And the other fellow says, well, you've got to realize age is no respecter of possums. <laughs> hey, so, puns are the lowest form of humor. Oh, yeah? Shakespeare used them. Maybe I ought to tell you a riddle. D -d -d Hazel, please, now, I told you I have so much work to do. You ought to relax a little and, and rest your mind so you can concentrate. Do you know the difference between light and heavy? Light and heavy? Well, of course I do. All right, then. What's the difference between a light bulb and a heavy bulb? Boy, that's a hard riddle. Well, that is about the most stupid riddle I've ever heard. Well, I can't figure it out either. Well, son, I can figure it out, but I am just not interested. Oh. Well, what is a heavy bulb? Well, uh... <clears throat> now, look, son, uh, now I can tell you, but I think you should learn to use the encyclopedia we gave you. It ain't in the encyclopedia. Hmm? You give up? No. All right, I'll tell you. The difference between a light bulb and a heavy bulb is the weight. <laughs> I'll get you coffee. <laughs> Boy, that was a good one, wasn't it, Dad? <laughs> uh, son, would you mind running along now? I have a lot of work to do. you by hello I'm lonely Baxter I sit by the telephone and it doesn't ring I thought a lawyer was supposed to keep his clients informed informed yes mr. Griffin and that I've done I'll bet you're keeping Josh Egan informed well of course I am how else can I work out a contract that you'll both sign? Here's your coffee, Mr. B. I'll put it on. Uh, Mr. Griffin, I know you don't like the man. It... Uh, is Hazel there with you? Uh, let me say hello to her. Well, Mr. Griffin, we're discussing something very important. Oh, all right, just a second. Uh, Hazel, uh, Mr. Griffin wants to say hello. Is he giving you a hard time with that contract, Mr. B? No, no, Hazel. You want me to straighten him out on anything? <laughs> no, Hazel, just say hello and get it over. Hi, Mr. Griffin. Oh, I'm just terrific. How are you? Oh, well, that's too bad. Maybe you better check on your shoe size. Well, in the meantime, why don't you go to the drugstore and get yourself a little corn pad? Yeah. <laughs> oh, uh, just a sec. Oh, uh, Mr. Griffin, have you heard the one about the cowboy movie star that was so conceited that he had to wear a 50-gallon hat? <laughs> <laughs> Hazel, bad and stupid. Give me that. Bye, Mr. Griffin. I thought it was real snappy. <laughs> Mr. Griffin, I'm terribly sorry. Uh, Mr. Griffin, uh, are you all right? <laughs> <laughs> well, oh, that woman is wonderful. Uh, wasn't that the funniest thing you ever heard, Baxter? <laughs> That's the trouble with you. You haven't any sense of humor. Oh, fuck. <laughs> Mr. Griffin, I'm expecting Mr. Egan any minute. And all right, I, I, I will call. I'll call the minute he signs. Yes. All right. Goodbye, Mr. Griffin. Oh, oh, what an irritating man. Who? Well, who's been calling me five times a day for the past week? Oh, Mr. Griffin. George, I was going to suggest that Mr. Griffin and Mr. Egan come for dinner here tonight. Oh, we could have the signing of the contract as a sort of a, a ceremony. Well, you're assuming that Mr. Egan will approve the wording. I hope you're right. I've incorporated every change he suggested. But somehow I get the haunting feeling this whole 